This conference will now be recorded. When we get to the question and answer section um, after uh, the presentation, um, we will allow you to, to ask questions. But in the meantime, you can submit your questions in the chat box and we will get to those uh, first whenever the Q&A session opens up. For those that join by phone later, we will give you an opportunity to uh, unmute and we'll unmute everyone and give you an opportunity to ask questions. Questions that we cannot get to uh, and address during our hour here, we will try and get those answered and get you an answer posted on the uh, Meridian Chamber of Commerce website. Um, everyone is muted at this time. So Cynthia, are you ready to go? Yes, sir, I am. All right, well, please welcome Cynthia Hi, um, hang on just a moment. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? Okay, good. <laughs> um, I don't have a, a PowerPoint presentation because things are changing so quickly that the one that I set, that I had last week is no longer any good, but I will cover all the salient points that are on our, for, on our PowerPoint presentation. The, the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has hit businesses in the United States especially hard. We are doing our best to help all businesses that have uh, damage because of this by way of a low interest economic injury disaster loan. These are available to small businesses, small agricultural cooperatives, small aquacultural businesses, and private nonprofit organizations affected by loss of revenue. They're available uh, to businesses directly affected by the disaster that offer services directly related to the disaster and other businesses indirectly related to the industry that are likely to be harmed by losses in their communities. These loans are to help meet working capital needs caused by the declared disaster. We help with we help you to pay financial obligations and operating expenses which could not have been paid had the disaster not occurred. These are items such as fixed debt payments, payroll, accounts payable, things of that nature. These are all extraordinary expenses caused by the disaster. Economic injuries do not replace lost, lost revenue, lost profits, nor do they fund expansion. The loan can be up to 30 years in term, and, are, and this is set by SBA based on each applicant's financial condition. Idle, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which we call IDLE, the government has a lot of acronyms, so IDLE assistance is available only to small businesses where SBA determines that they're unable to obtain credit elsewhere. That doesn't mean that business needs to go to a bank first and be declined, that just means that you as a small business owner are unable to walk into a bank and say, I want a $2 million loan at 3.875%. That's probably not going to happen. Um, the loans are limited to $2 million, less any business interruption insurance or other recovery you may receive. And the best way to apply right now is to go to the website www.sba.gov slash disaster and find the paper application there. You can complete that and, and upload it online, but our electronic loan application is still not working appropriately. We will look at your credit history. An applicant must have a credit history acceptable to SBA. We understand that, especially since this happened, it's uh, difficult to get your bills paid on time. So we look at that just since the disaster happened. Uh, we do have to show that you have the, the ability to repay any loan after the, the disaster has ended. So we look at your past to determine your future. And we can use your uh, projections to determine how, um, how, how well you will be able to repay loans. Any SBA loan 
over $25,000 will require collateral. However, we are not taking real estate as collateral for this disaster declaration. Um, we will use uh, your business assets such as uh, furniture, fixtures, machinery, equipment, inventory, things of that nature. We'll utilize a general security interest to protect, to protect the collateral. And these collateral requirements will be discussed during the, pro the processing phase. We will not decline a loan for lack of collateral, but we do require you to pledge what you can. Um, as of now, the filing requirements are fairly simple. You will need a completed SBA loan application. Uh, businesses mm -hmm. would file a uh, Form 5 and um, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I just drew a blank. <laughs> Sole proprietors would file a 5C, which is a home application. Uh, for nonprofits, we will need a copy of the most recent federal to income tax return for, for, for nonprofits and small businesses. A schedule of liabilities and a personal financial statement will also be required. We do have these forms available for you to upload or to download onto your computer and fill out should you need to do that. Other information may also be requested, such as a profit and loss or monthly sales figures. And we will request a, that you sign an IRS form 4506T. And this is to allow us to get a transcript of your taxes. And um, this is not going to stop us from going ahead and processing the claim, but we do need it as soon as we can get it. Now, um, there are a few changes to this, to the, to the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Um, the business, the um, Businesses are, are eligible for phase one process, and that's just, that's something you would discuss in processing. And that would be six months of working capital, not to exceed $500,000. And, you know, we look at your, at your ability to repay it. We're not going to saddle you with a bunch of debt that you can't afford. Um, for determining eligibility for an economic injury disaster loan, we begin with a four-part test. We check your location. You need to be in the disaster area. The disaster has been declared nationwide, every county, every territory. Um, but you have to have a location in the area from which you're submitting the application. If you live in Washington and your main office is in Washington and you just send things to Idaho to people's homes, then that would not be considered a location in Idaho. We look at your business activity. There are certain businesses that cannot get an SBA loan, and I'll go into that in a little bit. And we also look at your size, the size of the business. We use the NAICS size standards to determine what business is small and what is not. And then the businesses need to be independently owned and operated. Uh, if you are owned by another business in another area, then that business would need to file where they are. Um, your primary activity must be an otherwise eligible activity. And uh, like I said, we'll go that a little bit. Um, as far as an independently owned and operated business, the principal must have a business risk resulting from investing in facilities and equipment and by incurring ongoing expenses. This is, uh, so for example, a crew member on a fishing boat would not be eligible for these because it's not his boat. It needs to be free from significant control over other concerns uh, like the customers uh, or businesses that pay for your services. And then um, IRS guidelines state that merely filing a Schedule C with a federal tax return does not qualify the individual as an in the independently owned and operated business. And these are all things that will be discussed during the processing phase. 
ineligible economic injury disaster loan act, uh, applicants would be charitable organizations. Uh, chambers of Commerce are not eligible. Uh, consumer and marketing cooperatives, except for small agricultural cooperatives. Gambling concerns, casinos and racetracks, and uh, concerns engaged in illegal activities, lending or investment concerns, speculative activities, pawn shops, real estate developers, multi-level sales distribution, loan packagers who derive 30% or more of their annual income from the preparation of applications seeking financial assistance from SBA, and concerns where the principals are inca incarcerated on parole or on probation. The concern remains ineligible if the parole or probation is lifted solely because it's an impediment to obtaining a loan. Now, churches are eligible for secular activities only. They, um, and, and the activity cannot be, um, well, for example, a church has, uh, let me pull up my cheat sheet on this. Say a church has um, a feeding program or, or a daycare or something like that. Uh, we can help with that part of it as long as it is secular, as it is secular in nation, in nature, and um, the religious organization will be able to apply for idle funds to meet operating expenses that are specifically for the secular operations of the art organization, and there will be a self-certification required for that. Uh, see. The, the ineligible uses of the economic injury disaster loan would be refinancing long-term debt, uh, repaying, uh, paying down uh, uh, loans provided, guaranteed, or insured by another federal agency, except for your regular payments that you already make and that you can already do that. You can definitely use idle funds for that. We can't uh, refinance your home or your business. Uh, if you do get a brick loan, that is not considered a long-term debt. If a direct federal debt is delinquent, say you owe money on your taxes, we must have a written documentation from the appropriate agency explaining how the delinquency will be cured. Maybe they are going to, uh, or maybe they have a uh, uh, payment plan in place, and those payments are good, we will get uh, information to show that they're current. Now, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to ask, to answer them. Rick York, um, you're a lender here in town, and you've already begun working with clients in regards to obtaining SBA funding. Well, the pre payment, the payment forgiveness element is is uh, pending legislation, and I can't comment on pending le legislation. So um, that's something you might want to check back once everything is done. You can check with your district office. Um, there will be items in the press, I have no doubt, but uh, at this time, this is not an SBA function. Let's see, DJ, Brianna James. If you already have an SBA loan on your business, what will the limit be of the amount of money that you can get? The inventory you have is already collateral to the SBA loan. That would be something you need to discuss with your um, loan officer. Um, I don't know what the workarounds are for that yet. Uh, Meridian Chapter says, or Meridian Chamber says, you, remember you can submit your questions at any time and I'm going to let him read them. How quickly are the applications being processed from the time they are turned in? Well, as you, I'm sure you understand, we have hundreds and thousands of businesses applying for an SBA loan right now, and we handle them on a first-come, first-served basis. Each application is individual to its business, and that means that what you do is probably different from the guy in the, in the building next to you and we give each applicant our full attention while we're working on it. 
So I can tell you that as soon as these uh, disaster loans were announced in the news, we started getting applications. And the first applications were received and approved within a week, less than a week of when we got them. So it depends on how, how complicated your business is, whether we have all the information we need, and um, quite frankly, the volume. We are, we are training people every day to do this because we understand this is something that we just have never experienced, experienced as a nation yet, and we are all in this as far as trying to get things squared away. Um, can an investment house under construction qualify for a loan? No, that, that can't. That would be considered a, spe a speculative activity, and we aren't allowed to lend for that. Um, what happens if a small business is declined for an emergency loan from the SBA? What would their options be? I would say keep your eye on the news. There are things that are in Congress right now, and um, there may be other help available. Okay. Is there anybody else with any questions? I'm going to turn this back over to Sean then. Cynthia, we do have some other questions coming in. I'll read those for you. Uh, Perfect. Have, this is, this is, uh, we have a corporation whose main business is residential property management. Will these SBA loans be based on lost rental income or expenses that we will be able to meet based on a renter's inability to pay? Yes, you, you should apply as a, as a, as a uh, property management company. Uh, if your pay renters aren't paying rent, you're not going to be able to keep up your standard everyday expenses. Uh, so yes, do apply. Okay. Does the idle applicant qualify for an advance payment that is made prior to full approval? No, we would need to approve it prior to disbursement of any funds. Um, after an application is submitted, how quickly will the response come from the SBA? Well, in a perfect world, we would tell you by email right away. I understand that, that it's taking a little while for some people to get their emails from us, but we will respond as soon as quickly as we can. Um, and in that, we will explain what type of information we, we need from you. Uh, one person asked, can you address the loan forgiveness terms? No, I can't. That is actually pending legislation and I can't, I can't comment on that until we have some direction for that. I got a question. Yes, go ahead, Ed. Yes. Um, on the same note as the previous caller uh, or previous person talked about on loan forgiveness, what is the current understanding of loan forgiveness considering that the SBA loans are going to be personally backed? Well, there, at, at the current time, there is no forgiveness for SBA loans. These are, these are, these have been around since 1953. They stopped uh, forgiving the loans in 1974. And so um, the, there is no forgiveness at this point. So what is the ter termination on uh, or the uh, the the rates, or do we know uh, much about how much a, a business can get? Who determines that, and what's the interest loan on that? Yes, the rates right now for a business are 3.75 percent for a business and 2.75 percent for a private nonprofit. This can be up to two million dollars with a term of up to 30 years, and that all that is all determined in processing. I'm sorry, it's determined in what? In the processing phase. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Uh, our business owns 20 plus multiple residential rental properties. Do we qualify as a business to receive an, uh, to receive an idol to assist with mortgage payments? Well, like I said, we, we do use the NAC, NAICS standards for business size. That is something I would recommend that um, you can contact your branch office of the small or your district office of the SBA 
and they can tell you what the NAICS standard is for your particular business. Where is the best place to go to get help in understanding the applications and the complicated questions that are asked on it? I would suggest that you can call our uh, help our, our customer service line at 800-659-2955, or you can um, email a question to them at disastercustomerservice at sba.gov and they can get back to you. You can even email them and say, would you please call me? Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier that phase one is a six month working capital. Can you expand on that? And what are the other phases being proposed? Well, there are three phases and I really don't have enough information to go in phase two and phase three. However, we can disperse the first $25,000 upon a, once everything is signed and in file and it's been accepted by our legal department. Um, anything over $25,000, we would need to perfect the collateral. And once that is done, we will release the entire rest of the loan amount in one lump sum. If a business is using the loan for working capital, what kind of collateral can we use? Um, you can use furniture, fixtures, whatever um, collateral you have available other than real estate. And um, it, it's, we're not going to decline a loan because you don't have sufficient collateral. We just need to attach what, we, what you have available. We're, we can go in behind any other creditors you have as well. Um, I do have a question that came in via email from someone that could not attend. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can answer this one, but would a business qualify for the Paycheck Protection Program and qualify for the loan forgiveness on the payroll portion if they had to lay off some employees prior to the passage of the recent bill? That bill has not become law yet and we cannot, we cannot comment on pending legislation. Will receiving an IDA loan prohibit borrowers from other SBA relief programs? As far as I know, no, but you might want to talk to your SBA lender and find out. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'm going to unmute the people that are on just the, the phone call uh, so that you can ask questions um, since you aren't able to uh, input via the chat. So I am unmuting those now. I got a, thank you very much. I have a question as far as a new business startup, how does this affect the, the uh, new businesses that are striving for an SBA loan? Um, that sort of thing is determined. A lot of startups have been in business actually for a number of months and a lot of startups haven't begun to actually be taking in money. So that's something that we suggest you go ahead and apply and then talk to your loan officer about that. So the previous rules apply to those current situations then, is that what you're saying? Yes. Thank you. Another question that came in on chat is, and I think you've answered this, but can we refinance our current SBA loan with this loan? No, you can't. Um, you can use the money to make your, your routine payments. However, talk to your lender to see if it's been deferred. SBA loans are automatically deferred to the end of the year. And these loans that we that you obtain for COVID will not have a payment due date until the 12th month after the note is signed. So you do have a while to get get back on your feet. Those of you that joined via computer, I also have unmuted you. If you did not want to chat a question, you can unmute yourself now and um, ask a question. Uh, we've got another question on chat. 
If a bit business has zero debt, does that work favorably in the decision for an idle loan? That certainly would uh, put you in the, the category of someone who um, has very few liabilities. Uh, again, we would suggest that you talk to a loan officer about this. These loans are only for businesses that cannot get credit elsewhere, meaning if you have significant assets that would not be called to, into play for this disaster, then um, it may be considered a, a credit elsewhere type of thing. Um, we don't require that you drain all your reserves for this. We want you, your business to stay healthy and flourish. But if you're able to provide for your own recovery, then we will ask that you do that. Uh, Hi, Cynthia. Questions? Go ahead. Hi. Hi, this is Autumn Kersey with Treasure Valley Children's Theater. I um, may know the answer to this question, but I'm going to put it out there. I applied for an SBA loan earlier this week, and um, then, of course, the new information came out um, so quickly, and I checked the site, and it appears that there's just some slight changes in the forms. Would you suggest that I reapply with the new information or just sit on what I've already submitted? Just just sit on what you've already submitted. If there are other items that are required, your loan officer will request them. But Wonderful. good, you got in there ahead of people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the independently owned and operated. I thought you said something about a Schedule C. If, if somebody does their business income through a Schedule C, are they eligible? Yes, they are. Just the fact that you file a Schedule C does not automa automatically make you eligible. But yes, you, if you file a Schedule C, you can apply. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We still have some time. I saw one from Terry Villar flash up there for a second. Oh, yes. Um, if the money is used in a certain ways, such as payroll, rent, insurance payments, et cetera, will it be forgiven or will we still be required to pay interest on the loan? SBA disaster loans are not forgiven. Um, and you do need to pay interest on whatever money you take. If you're approved for $100,000 and you find you only need 50000 or five or anything, any amount less than that, you only pay back what you actually borrow. Hey, Cynthia, and you're speaking specifically to the current loans, the current idle loan that is in place. That could Correct. change with legislation that is no. uh, in the process, correct? I don't, I can't comment on legislation. I really don't know much about it other than what I've seen on the news. And I, I really can't comment to that until it is made law and we get direction from Washington about that. Um, but as of right now, the economic injury disaster loans are not forgivable. And uh, people might want to talk to their bankers once it does become law to find out um, what they might be able to write off. We have another question. Uh, it says, I also applied last Saturday, but they never asked me for what we, we need it for. Will this be something that we discuss further once the loan agent contacts us? I haven't heard anything in almost a week. Yes, that is something that you would discuss in processing. If you haven't heard from your um, your loan officer within 10 days, you can contact our customer service line and they can tell you if it's been assigned and to whom it has been assigned. Uh, that number is 800-659-2955. So I, I had a question about customer service number you were talking about um, because you cannot check your status on your loan application anymore online. 
um, and that is the, seems to be the only way. Is there a quicker way to get a status update on your application besides the customer service number? Because I had put in the chat earlier, I called yesterday around three o'clock and I was 587 to the queue. So there would be no yeah. way I could get through the queue in, a, in a, even a 24 hour period, I don't think. So do you suggest a different way for us to check on status besides just the customer service number? I would recommend that you that you send an email to disaster customer assistance at sba.gov and then they can forward it to whoever it is that has your file. We, um, I, I understand people are frustrated at the amount of time it's taking to get through and I, I and I wish that we could do more right now. We are adding personnel every day. They are beefing up our system. This came in as a complete body blow to everyone in the country. And we're, we're working as quickly as we can. We want to make sure that everybody's information is safe and secure. And so that, that's why the, the, the site has been down off and on. Um, the, it, it might be better since you're in Idaho, um, if you can go on later in the evening when all the people back east have gotten off and try and complete your application that way. But I know that they are making strides. It was up for a little while today. And if you go in without a VPN, for some reason, people are able to get on. I don't do anything without a VPN, though, so I don't know what to tell you. Cynthia, could you repeat that 1-800 number, and I'll type it into the chat for everyone? Sure. It's 800-659-2955. And the email address is disaster customer assistance at sba.gov. Do we have any more questions? Additional question about collateral. You said that you would take collateral. So does that mean if somebody applies for one of the disaster loans and subsequently decides that they want to apply for an additional SBA loan, you are going to be in a first lien position already, so that may prevent the lender from being able to move forward, or would you be willing to support me? Well, if you decide you're not going to take the SBA disaster loan, of course we would get off that lien. Um, but that's something that you would need to talk to your loan processor or, or your lender about, um, depending on which route you decide to go. Okay. Anybody else with a question? Okay, I don't see any questions in the chat. Uh, don't see anyone else uh, asking a question uh, on for the callers. Uh, Cynthia, I want to say thank you for being on today. And um, we understand that things are constantly changing and we'll look for ways to continue to update our membership in the business community uh, as things become law and uh, the SBA may have some more guidance and direction on uh, the uh, the application processes and what would be covered and, and things uh, along those lines. Well, thank you very much, Sean, and I look forward to hearing from you. Excellent. Well, thank you all for joining us today, and we will keep you informed and, and turn to the Chamber's website uh, to see when we will have a uh, another webinar and another um, meeting to uh, share with you information as things become available. Thank you all and have a good day. Thank you.